We've managed to do a lot of rankings in the last few months, focusing on certain Pokemon gym leaders, rivals, and everything in between. Though there is one small part of in-game playthroughs that I managed to skip over, and I'm going to be handling that right here today. You guys already saw the name of the video, so it's probably not too surprising to hear me say this. But today, I'm ranking the evil team leaders from weakest to strongest. Now here's the deal. I'm actually going to be doing this using the absolute best teams that these characters get their hands on, and thus I'm using the most recent appearance as part of Generation 7 with Ultra Sun and Moon, with the exception of Lucimine, who will have her Ultra Space team from Sun and Moon used. Before I go any further though, I'd like to talk about the curious case of Chairman Rose. There is definitely an argument to be made that he is an evil team leader, with Marco Cosmos being an evil team, but I don't see it that way. Chairman Rose is far from evil, if not misguided, with probably the most evil thing he does being battling the player in Hop at Rose Tower. He's trying to force a new Darkest Day, but that was in an attempt to help Galar, and throughout the game he is seen doing good things for Galar and helping the region. I just don't see Chairman Rose as truly being an evil team leader, or Marco Cosmos as being an evil team. Eternatus eventually is defeated, and Rose turns himself in for releasing it upon the world, and we don't hear from him again. Honestly, I just can't in good conscience include Chairman Rose on this list. Besides, Team Yell is the supposed evil team of Sword and Shield, and even they aren't evil, and their supposed leader Pierce is not even the least bit of evil. Just understand that when you don't see Chairman Rose in this video. We open up this ranking with by far the weakest of the evil team leaders in Ultra Sun and Moon, Team Skull's Guzma. It shouldn't be too surprising that Guzma is here as the weakest evil team leader, considering the fact that he boasts a bug type team that features a Masquerade. Like, come on guys, a Masquerade? It may have Air Slash and Bug Buzz, and those hit harder with the buff Masquerade got in the 7th generation, but come on. That defense is just awful, and it is a Pokemon with better potential for sure, but it's still not great. His best Pokemon is a Glissapod with Sucker Punch, Razor Shell, and First Impression. It may only have three moves, but these are three very good moves on a strong Pokemon. And with Emergency Exit as an ability, Glissapod can survive to a later point in the battle. Guzma also has a Pinsir that is a nicely varied moveset, but remember, this is just a pincer, and thus it is probably going to be quite easy to take out, even with 100 base defense. It's not going to take special hits well at all, so a well-placed air slash or flamethrower is going to crush this thing. And Vikavolt finally is an incredibly scary special attacking Pokemon, but it has no speed to speak of. So that scary special attack loses some of its punch, since it can be taken out with a well-placed special move, like with pincer. Really, Guzma's team isn't inherently terrible, but it is definitely the weakest of these evil team leaders in Ultra Sun and Moon. Now I know I had mentioned that Chairman Rose isn't exactly an evil team leader, but I'm going to count Lucimine as one even though the Aether Foundation isn't inherently evil themselves. She is still very much someone that, due to the madness, has become a major threat to the entirety of her region and possibly the world. It's a bit different from what Chairman Rose did I think. Anyway, Lucimine's team in Ultra Space is an interesting challenge, since there's booster Pokemon in the same sort of way that totems get. Now the boosts are a bit weird, like Hermilotic gets an attack stat boost but has no physical attacks. However, despite some weird boosts among her Pokemon, there are some that actually really fit, like the special attack boost for Lilligant and defense boost on her Beware. She uses a Clefable with Moonblast and Cosmic Power, which can definitely set up into being an annoying opponent. And that Lilligant will use Petal Dance to do some major damage on top of a trio of support moves in Leech Seed, Teeter Dance, and Stun Spore. Her Miss Magius is a fast option on her team that is a speed boost, and will hit hard on the special side like most of her team, being able to hit hard with Shadow Ball and Mystical Power with Pain Split to help out with healing. The worst Pokemon on the team is without a doubt the Smilotic, getting an attack boost for some reason despite having just one attacking move, the special hitting Hydro Pump. While my Although it can be, and really is a good Pokemon, it's a bit of a waste of potential on Lucimine's team. The Beware is a bit of a disappointment too, using Hammer Arm and Takedown, which will really cripple its speed even further, and end up destroying its own HP with residual damage. Really, Lucimine has a mostly good team, and it is better than Guzma's by far, but she can't touch the teams of the other leaders of Rainbow Rocket. Coming in next in the rankings is the leader of Team Magma, Maxi. I'd like to point out one thing before we go further, and that is that Archie and Maxi look nothing as they do in Oras, and instead seem a bit closer in design to their Ruby and Sapphire appearances, which is just such a shame. They look really boring in Ultra Sun and Moon, so I gotta admit it was a big misstep by Game Freak not to reuse their Oras designs. Let's move on from that though and talk about the team Maxi uses, which is headlined by a Groudon that has itself a great moveset with Earthquake, Ancient Power, Solar Beam, and Flamethrower. 
The rest of Maxi's team is very good too, with a Mighty Enna featuring all the Elemental Fang moves and Crunch, a Crobat and Weezing with moves that make the most of their move pulls, and a Camerupt that will hit you as a mixed attacker. So considering the nature of my choice to use the Rainbow Rocket versions of these team leaders, they all actually have good teams, so I think the best thing to do is talk about why they're not higher on the list. When it comes to Maxi, his team has such a massive defensive issue, with the exception of Groudon. Camerupt will get absolutely bodied by mostly any water type, and a Pokemon like Medicham has great potential to tear through Weezing, Crobat, and Mightyena. There is a big difference between Maxi and the other team leaders, that is highlighted by Groudon being his one and only big deal Pokemon. Since Maxi is here though, on this list, I suppose Team Aqua over Team Magma. Next up is the leader of Team Plasma, Univis Getsis. And in his case, there's two teams I could choose from. And I elected to go with the one where he uses Zekrom instead of Reshrom, as I think it complements the team better. The team he sends out into battle is made up of some of the best attackers from the fifth generation, with Bufalant, Kafirgrigus, Bisharp, and Hydreigon following Zekrom into battle. Kafirgrigus is a great defensive Pokemon that will make great usage of Power Split and Will-O-Wisp to cripple your physical attackers, and then hit you hard with Shadow Ball and Dark Pulse. Meanwhile, Bufalant can use Poison Jab to hit fairy types, and will EQ its way through a battle. Bisharp is its usual strong self with Defiant for an ability, and Iron Head Night Slash as stab moves. And finally, Hydreigon complements the physical strength of Zekrom by calling upon great special moves like Dragon Pulse and Dark Pulse. The reason Get Getsis finds himself on the back end of this ranking though, is that his team, while powerful and made up of some great attackers from Minova, isn't the best that it could be. That Bufalon is not as impressive as its great attack stat makes it look. And honestly, a better Pokemon for Getsis to use probably would have been Electros. It could have provided fantastic coverage and really just would have been a step up. Also, while Zekrom is a fantastic physical attacker with Bolt Strike and Zen Head, but there is nothing on it to help cover against fairy types, which I have held a bit against Getsis here. The Evil Sage might be one of the most intimidating villains design-wise and in his respective series of games, but his team just falls short of the top half of the list. Hey, how about we move on to the other evil team leader from Hoenn now, the water-type bruiser named Archie. His team is similar to Maxi's, as he runs the same Mightyena and Crobat sets, but he then fields a Muck, Sharpedo, and Kyogre. And in my mind, that definitely outclasses the Weezing, Camerupt, and Groudon that Maxi brings to battle. Archie makes usage of his typing way better, as the 7th generation is awful kind to a physical attacker like Sharpedo, giving it liquidation, which definitely enables it to do massive damage with a strong physical water move. Also, honestly, Kyogre is just such a threat that it outclasses Groudon in this scenario. It's of course got Drizzle, but backing that up is Hydro Pump and Thunder, which thrive in the rain, and then Ice Beam for coverage. And finally, Ancient Power, which is such a wild card, with that chance to enhance all Kyogre's stats. Who holds Archie back though is sort of the same thing that was holding back Maxi in a way. While he does have better Pokemon in Sharpedo and Kyogre, which are really great attackers, the Muck can be easily taken out with an Earthquake, and likes to levitate Maxi's Weezing head. The Mightyena and Crobat are decent, and can offer some good coverage just like they did with Maxi's team. But Mightyena's awful defenses? Leave it at your mercy, and Crobat has the same sort of issue with its defenses. Archie's team can be gotten through easily until you get to the Sharpedo Kyogre 1-2 punch that will make you really have to work to overcome him. Kyogre is an absolute tank, and it will slam you hard with its special moves, and quite frankly, that is enough to put Archie here on the top half of the list. We're here at the top three now, and you're going to find out very quickly why these three outpace the rest of the evil leaders. We've got none other than the leader of Team Galactic, fresh out of the distortion world, Cyrus. I have chosen the Ultra Sun team that Cyrus uses, which features Dialga over Palkia, for obvious reasons. Dialga completely wipes away its weakness to the fairy and dragon typings, and only has two, ground and fighting. It'll take tons of hits really well, and then it'll clap back with great stab moves like Flash Cannon and of course Roar of Time, even with the recharge turn that comes from using it. Dialga is absolutely one of the best dragon types out there thanks to that typing, so it being featured on a team really got a lot of points for Cyrus. The other Pokemon he has are Weavile, Houndoom, Haunchcrow, and yet another Crobat, showing that he is definitely a fan of dark types. Now, these are some good dark types, with Weavile especially being a tremendous complementary Pokemon to Dialga, and Haunchcrow being able to cover against the fighting types while Weavile goes to the ground types. This is a relatively well-balanced team, except for the fact that there is a severe defense problem outside of Dialga. These are Pokemon that can hit hard from both the physical and special side, but the fact of the matter is, they can't take hits. A Crabominable could go a long way towards defeating Cyrus by turning to ice and fighting type moves. There is one thing he is lacking though, that you're going to see with these next two leaders that prevented him from riding that Dialga to a higher spot. 
We now reach the penultimate spot in this ranking, and it belongs to quite possibly the most dangerous evil team leader of all, and even more so than the ones we've spoken about before. Team Aqua and Magma tried to make major changes to the world's layout by either drawing it out or flooding it, while Cyrus wanted to create a whole universe on his own, but inevitably never had a true chance of pulling that off. Though, of all the leaders who had a real chance to cause major damage, Lysander is the one. The ultimate weapon from X and Y could have been used to force everyone to stay alive forever, or kill everyone which honestly feels like a fate worse than those previous leaders tried to invoke. Anyway, we're supposed to be talking about the teams, and Lysander has a very good one. He has a haunch curve that is used a bit differently from the one Cyrus has, as it actually is more of a special attacker. His man shell will hit you hard and is very fast, with fake out for flinching and you turn to escape. And that Pyroar has powerful stab moves like Hyper Voice and Flamethrower, as well as the ability Rivalry, which it should be able to put to use. Now, since this is the Ultra Sun version of Lysander's team that I'm using, he uses Xerneas as his legendary. And you guys already know just how good it is. It's got Geomancy, which will help set it up to be incredible, as well as Moonblast to hit ridiculously hard with. Now the one difference between Lysander and the teams before him is that he actually Mega Evolves a Pokemon, calling upon Mega Gyarados in this battle. And it's super strong, with Waterfall, Earthquake, Crunch, and Stone Edge. Lysander's team is sort of nuts, and really it would make him the strongest team leader, if not for the one we haven't spoken about yet. It's crazy to think there's someone with a team better than this, but there indeed is. Finally, we reach the strongest evil team leader, and wouldn't you know it, it's the original evil leader. Giovanni boasts the strongest team any evil leader has ever seen, and it's led by, in the regards of many, the strongest Pokemon of all time, Mega Mewtwo Y. This is his team for Ultra Moon, and I ended up choosing it over the Sun team with Mega Mewtwo X, because this whole team is pretty loaded on physical attackers already. So having the Pokemon with the single strongest special attack set of all time, this made a lot of sense. That Mewtwo is loaded with Psy Strike, which is an awesome option for any special walls you might bring into battle, and then Psychic to hit all of those without good special defense. Aura Sphere is good against your Dark types, and Ice Beam will beat back any strong Dragon or Ground types you think you can counter with. The rest of Giovanni's team behind Mewtwo is stacked as well, with both Mido King and Nido Queen bringing a 1-2 punch, a physical and special attacking goodness, while Ductrio is his speedy EQ user that can set up Sandstorm for the rest of the team to take advantage of. There's a Rhyperior that of course hits very hard, and serves as a very good wall whose awful speed is made for by other speedy Pokemon in Giovanni's squad. There are so many different coverage moves on this team, and just great stats across the board on quite a few of them. But above all else, Mega Mewtwo Y is here. This is almost unfair. Giovanni takes his rightful spot as the evil team leader, and it's all thanks to his creation. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. We've ranked all the evil team leaders from weakest to strongest, and I'm pretty confident we got this one correct. I want to know what you guys think though, so let me know in the comments below if you agree that Giovanni's got the strongest team of them all. And if not, tell me who you think does. I'll be on the lookout for what you guys have to say. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you guys enjoyed this content, maybe you'll enjoy my anime content and gaming content as well. I do a lot of anime top 10s and discussions, and with the gaming channel, I play Pokemon and everything Nintendo. Also follow me on social media so you get updates about when I go live on Twitch or when I upload in general. Links for all that will be in the description below. If you want to support me even further and gain cool perks, check out my Patreon. These lovely people have all given me their support over there and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.